We've all heard about Morse code and the Morse telegraph system, and we're familiar, at least in passing, with it. But there are some really surprising facts associated with it. It's really interesting to see who the characters were and how the system was developed. It's quite surprising to see how it all came together. First of all, who was Morse? Morse, well, his name was Samuel Morse, and he was an American artist, a portrait painter. Uh, he'd started out as an itinerant uh, portrait painter, but he was actually very, very good. Uh, and in fact, some of his uh, portraits are mounted in the White House, so I am told. I haven't actually been there to verify that, but uh, I have it on good authority. But Morse was, uh, he had another passion for uh, uh, the, the new science of electrical and electromagnetism and, and whatever. Um, it was very new in those days and I think it's really quite hard as we're so used to uh, seeing electronics and all the rest of it around us to understand how new some of these things were and, and how revolutionary they were. But Morse had a, a real interest in that. But he also wanted to go to Europe to study the European style of uh, painting. It was quite different apparently, um, and he wanted to really understand that. So he traveled around Europe for a while and then returned to the US. In those days, it was actually 1832, traveling was a lot slower than it is today. It took about a month for the uh, ship named Sully to actually return to uh, the US and there were passengers on board obviously and what did they do? They discussed things with one another and Morse started discussing the new science of electric, electricity and uh, magnetism with another passenger who was a, a, a geologist and a few ideas started to uh, generate in Morse's mind. What can we do with this? Very few applications had actually started to be uh, developed for uh, electricity and electromagnetism because it was so new, what could you use it for? So on the way back, he was thinking to himself, well, how can I use it? I can develop a, a telegraph system. We can transmit messages, uh, communicate with each other over greater distances. Anyway, when he got back to the US, he started spending a lot of time developing the, the basic ideas for this. It was really quite hard because in those days um, a lot of the things we take for granted weren't there. Uh, some of his ideas may seem quite wacky um, and in fact uh, um, they, they didn't quite know what they were doing because it was all so new. It reminds me of a quote from somebody where they said, well if we knew what we were doing we wouldn't call it development. So Morse was developing the system and he needed to enlist a few uh, helpers, some associates. One of these was somebody called Alfred Vail, who had quite a ma mechanical background and, and was very useful because a lot of the things were electromechanical. Morse had ideas of mechanical actuators and things like that for sending and receiving. But Alfred Vail came up, well, probably Alfred Vail, um, came up with the idea of using what we now know as a Morse key, so should we call it a Veil key? I don't know, but it's quite a surprising fact that maybe Morse didn't invent the Morse key. So Alfred Vail developed this Morse key, or it was probably him, and this was one of the major ass assets of the, the overall system. It was easy to send the code. The first system actually was set up, or the first major system, was set up in uh, 1844 with a $30,000 grant from Congress and a line uh, was built between Baltimore and Washington. And on the 24th of May 1844, the first message was sent across this and it said, What hath God wrought? It's a, a quote from uh, uh, the Christian Holy Bible. However, uh, we're, we're all used to today to the, the sound of Morse code coming over radio, the dots and dashes, the beeps and, and whatever. But that isn't what it was like then. Um, the concept for receiving, or the original concept for receiving, was to have what was called an inker. And in fact here we see 
a, a relatively modern Inca. This one was from about 1900, but it shows the sort of concept. A clockwork motor would drive a tape across a pen that was actuated by the various voltages going up and down, and so it would mark the dots and dashes onto the, the paper tape, and that could then later be decoded. Although this was still used in some instances where they needed to record what was being sent, a lot of the operators actually got so used to the, the noise of the, the Inca that they could decode the Morse without the need for the whole Inca system. And they had what was called a sounder. Relatively simple thing, just an electromagnet. And the sounder would actually sound the dots and dashes over it and, and the operators would then be able to use this to decode that. And in fact, a lot of the American operators were itinerant and they'd carry their uh, uh, keys with them. They, they wanted their own key and they'd have a, a key and a sounder on a base and this was called a, a key on base or a, a cob. The advantage of the Morse system was that it used just a single wire, uh, and this is quite surprising if you think about it. Today we don't uh, think about having a wire, but wire then was very expensive. The technology for extruding the wire and also for insulating it was really, really expensive. And the real advantage of the Morse system, or the Morse telegraph, was that it was just a single wire was required. Other systems have been developed that required multiple wires, and these were so expensive. Morse's system was simple and easy to use, and it spread like wildfire across the, the first the continent and then globally, enabling people to keep in contact with one another very, very easily and very quickly. So the Morse system itself was a real advantage. It was a real benefit, and it took off it then was used on radios because radios were, uh, uh, it was easy to on off key a, a transmitter and send that over the air as we've all heard in recent uh, years from that. There's plenty more information on in the description. There's links to huge amounts of information. Please check those out. Please also subscribe to our video, uh, to the uh, channel and also like the video. Really pleased if you could do that. Thank you.